Hey, good evening, everybody. This is the End Time Church. These are the End Times. My gosh, we should know that by now. And uh, we're the church, uh, two of us at least. That's our sister T-Rex over there. Pastor Manta is me. Uh, Pastor Anderson is uh, taking a well-deserved night here. We actually did some extra work today for us, so you're good to go, brother. Thank you for that. Uh, we want to say hello to you wherever you are from. We want to say welcome. We want to give you a virtual hug and fist bump and all that. Um, we're so glad to, that you decided to join us. And if you think this is of the Lord, please share it. That's the end of that message. Uh, and it's super easy to do. And please say hello. There's Bond Servant. Hello. He's in hand. Hello, Bond Servant. Love you. Yes, please say hello. Where you're from, uh, where are you watching this? We've got us back on Facebook for now. <laughs> uh YouTube, the Twitter X platform, uh, of course, our own particular website and app, which you want to get, endtime.app. Please go get that. It's free. Use it 24-7. It's for the church. And also we have our own Roku channel and Apple TV channel. Did you know? On uh streaming televisions, you know, most people have that stuff. And there you go. <laughs> it looks like a very sanitary hand there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The glove. Anyways, uh, so utilize all that stuff, okay, guys? Uh, know that it's there. It's there for you. Please take advantage of all that stuff. So you don't even need a a, a phone or a computer uh, to participate and see what we're doing here and and be part of the family. That's oh, that's what we desire. I think more than anything, mm-hmm. right, Taryn? That's basically what we're trying to do here. Yeah, that's the thing. Be- that's the part. Yeah, be a fam. That's 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 it. And of course, our father is the most important part of that family. So we want to uh, honor him in everything we do. That's why we're here doing this. If this is a blessing to you, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. Just want to get that out of the way right off the top. There's no other way. It's us supporting us. Okay. If you think this is of the Lord, support it and time.church slash give anything you can, any way you want. We make it as easy as we can. We are a nonprofit 501c3. If that is important to you, we are totally transparent about all that stuff. So please take advantage again of that and support the Lord's work. Thank you. And um, what are those? Owls? Fancy. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Anyways, we're too silly now. We're actually going to, we're actually going to have communion tonight, guys. We know we're kind of springing that on you, but um, a few of us were kind of kicking that around. Like maybe we need to do this more often than once a month. So we're just going to try it tonight. Uh, maybe how about put in the chat whether you're into that. Um, let us know if that's cool with you. If you like to do it every week, if you think that's uh, good or needed or maybe not, and you don't like it or not necessary, just go ahead and, and let us know right there, wherever you're watching this. Um, please feel free to disagree. That's not a problem. That's a good point. No matter what. Okay. It doesn't matter. But uh, we're going to get into the message tonight, of course, called Manipulating Prophecy. It's going to be a great fun one, like I usually have. Uh, (laughs) But uh, it's important, I think. uh, The Lord's definitely at work um, all over the place with this. So we want to... Oh, there you go. See, now we have official approval. We're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Andersons. Thank you. I love communion. Bless you all. And he's totes, so that's cool. He's trying to be like Taryn. Um. (laughs) What? Anyways, bond servants into it. All right, awesome. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna actually pray right now. So if you have any prayer request whatsoever, please just type it in right now. Again, no matter where you're watching, even if it's on our app or our site, you just type it right on the video. There's a little box you can click. It says live chat. Boop. Put your stuff in the right Taryn, It works. You've used it. Yeah, I used it last week, yeah. I think. But I'm praying, and if I miss yours, it's probably because I'm I'm on my phone and I'm not sure. Yeah. To see them coming in. It's, it's all good. Um, but anyway, it works wherever you're using it. Just use that and say whatever your prayer request is, we will get to it. And if anything comes in, I'll put it on the screen for you, uh, T-Rex. Not a problem. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> sure thing. Okay, so guys, do that right now. We want to get together. We want to go to the Father. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take communion, actually, uh, after our time of worship together. And then we'll get to the message. All right? That sound like a plan? All right. So... Let's go, and then anything that comes in, Taryn, I will I'll bring it right up. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Father, thank you for all the people who are here tonight and all our friends who are um, elsewhere. Um, this is a special community uh, to me, and very much. Um, I really don't know what I would do without them the past few years. 
I ask that you bring in, um, you know, anyone else who's kind of like us, especially where we're, we're sort of floating lost. We've maybe we're, we feel like that, like crazy prophecy person in our church that nobody uh, wants to talk to very much um, or something like, you know, along those lines, but we all find each other and then we can talk about prophecy all day. And it's, it's totally great. Um, I pray for bond servants, um, for her health in general. I know there's a lot of issues and, um, for her friends, um, her, her family. I ask you for protection and health for the Manti and Anderson families. Um, and, um, for our, uh, the Akmudis, um, oh, for Sarah, her friend in Korea has asked for prayers for his wife, who's involved in a local apocalyptic cult. Oh, yeah, Lord, please, um, I pray that you would help reveal the truth to this, um, lady. Um, that kind of stuff is really, it's really scary, and, um, I'm sure her husband is hurting, but you would also give him peace, and, um, give him wisdom to help her out um as the spiritual you know head um and i ask that you would um just break any demonic power that's over that um i ask for all of us um to be together in the community of repentance um um some of us are really grieving some scandals in the world that have come to light and that you're bringing to light and um we're taking it really seriously um, amongst ourselves in our own hearts and, and with, uh, with also the way that we react um, and we love other people who are involved in it at various levels and of various different opinions about how things should be handled. I'm sorry, bond servant. I'm sorry that you've had so much drama. It really seems endless. Um, I pray for the Palmers traveling and moving. Um, uh, please be with Matt and Todd and Sarah very specially um, and their struggles right now. Philip Lai and our friends um, in Israel right now um, who are along. I, I think they might be along together. I'm not sure. Um, and as we approach communion, just put on our hearts what we need to repent of and break the chains of um just the bondage that are that's over us, but also just the war that we have daily with our own flesh. Um, Lord, just give us all victory and bring us all into your presence together tonight. In Jesus' name I ask, amen.
Father, I pray that you are honored by that new song from the heart of our sister, an original. Father, now we come together as one in communion. And to uh, anyone who is out there who wants to participate and who has uh, some form of bread or fruit of the vine, then uh, feel free to participate. If not, don't feel guilty. Um, again, this was unannounced, but I um, felt like maybe we should do this. Many are feeling a, a burden and um, a heavy heartedness, like our sister Kim has said, and um, I feel that as well. So if you have, let's participate together in communion with one another and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which now I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, thank you for allowing this opportunity tonight. Thank you for allowing us to commune with you and with the saints throughout the world on this day and in all days previous and ages past. We are one body of Christ through the awesome power of your Holy Spirit, the supernatural connection that you have afforded us as your children, those of us who believe and have been given the privilege to be called children of God. We love you. Thank you for loving us first, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Vestige off and message to begin. Uh, please, by the way, if um, even if you were arriving a little after our prayer time, feel free, to, uh, like people are doing, to continue to put prayer requests in. Uh, to your um, chat area, wherever you're watching this tonight. I see Susanna is, uh, of course, she's our dear sister in Ireland. She's actually watching on the TV through one of our TV platforms. So bless her and bless all of you. Hello, Jim. Thanks for uh, praying along with us and and with these um, requests. Thank you so much. Um, it came for several folks that she's praying for, etc., for Israel, for the Palestinians. Yeah. Amen. Okay. This is good. <clears throat> okay. And by the way, this is why the app is a great thing for you to have and use. You always, always will have a prayer uh, partner as a request can be made and be prayed for right away. You can always get with, um, you know, a brother or sister who will pray with you or contact you, you know, so use that venue. And as we put at the bottom there, it's real Christian fellowship. It's for the church, by the church. Um, Go around the social media platforms and go direct to your family. Okay. <clears throat> Tonight is uh, something we're calling manipulating prophecy. I don't know why the Lord just doesn't give me something easy, like easy breezy salvation message. And we need to do that. Don't get me wrong. Um, but um, we also need to be attentive to what the Lord is doing today, right? Right now, what is happening? 
um, with the body um, and with uh, the situation that we find ourselves. And um, it's, it is what it is as the, as the, my generation would say. Um, so we've got to keep up and not pretend we're at a place where we're not. Okay. What does all that mean? Let's take a look. All right. We're calling this manipulating prophecy. The great deception of manipulate manipulating prophecy and the sin of applying Bible prophecy to ourselves. Ezekiel 13, we're going to cover tonight and more that's coming in 2024 because that's again, that's where we are. We can see it. Those with eyes to see um, will be able to discern that this is not really going anywhere. All right. Um, We're going to just cover Ezekiel 13 right now because this is what it's come to. And um, this is now something we've done. Maybe you know, maybe you don't, for five years now. This is now our fifth year of an online um, church that talks about the end times all the time. And um, not that we want to. It's that what we're trying to acknowledge the reality. We're trying to acknowledge that um, God is still active and working and that he has amazing, awesome, terrifying things um, in our future and in our present. And we had better be awake to that. And if we are, you know, considering ourselves as people of the light or people of the day, um, perhaps as one of these wise virgins that we read about, we have to be very careful because once we do start reading ourselves into the scripture, you're, we're almost asking for trouble. Uh, hey, brother Tiki, I see you, brother. Uh, 2018, you're right. Am I off on my... This is the sixth year. I guess I don't want to admit it. Uh, yeah, you got it. You got it, Kimberly. Uh, yes, two, 2018. Um, our launch date was July publicly, and we did a couple services in the months preceding that. So late spring 2018 was exactly when we started this, this church. But anyway, yeah, so we've been doing that for quite a while. And um, I love that you're here and that we've uh, people come and go, you know, but this God has seen fit to keep this going. So praise him for that. All right. Let's just read the scripture and the facts are going to, the Holy Spirit is just going to jump out at you on this. I hope. I expect, I expect you will. Okay. Your Bible may have a heading on this chapter that says, Woe to the foolish prophets. Something to that effect. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets. That's a weird, that's a weird saying right there. Prophesy against the prophets of Israel, who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart, hear the word of the Lord. Obviously, we have, we are big in this church, and Pastor Anderson and myself and everyone else who's on the air here um, will always make it a point to say, let's divide the word of God correctly, right? Who is this to? What's the context? Who is the audience? All that stuff. And obviously, Ezekiel is a, is a Jewish priest. He's uh, being sent to the people of Israel itself um, in the city of Jerusalem and all these things. And he's got a whole bunch of content here, right? That the Lord has directly given to him. In fact, God has visited him directly in this crazy vehicle with these four creatures and, and wheels and all this stuff, right? That's all part of Ezekiel's testimony. 
And we can't, uh, nobody wants to separate that fact that that's, yes, that's who he was. That's who we were speaking to. But yet, um, these are prophetic realities for looking forward in time. And that, yes, this is a condition of humanity. And if we have a people that are called out and are called to be grafted into Israel as the Gentile church, like us, like me, Okay, maybe you saw Talit earlier, but we're not a Messianic Jewish congregation. We are Gentiles, for the most part. Um, so that's where we're coming from. And so some things are just, they're just true. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy out of their own heart. When somebody prophesies, they're claiming to speak for God. It's called the prophets of Israel. They're not just some, it's not like a band, right? It's not like a, um, you can't just show up one day and say, hey, I'm a prophet of Israel. These men, maybe women, um, were absolutely counted on and assumed that God was speaking to them and speaking through them. But God sends a real one, one who is really speaking to, and says, speak to them because they're not prophesying for me. I'm not talking to them. They're prophesying for their own heart. Again, think of this now. Who do we have in the, let's say, I don't know, the Christian world, not the lost world, right? Not the pagan world, not the political world, the Christian world. Maybe it's very trusted. Uh, maybe it's had a great success and a global reach, impact, and is trusted as somebody who hears from God. Thus is the Lord God, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Oh, Israel, your prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. I remember when Jesus used that word about King Herod, right? And you tell that fox, you have not gone up into the gaps to the prophets of Israel who are supposed to be doing their job, which is what? You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. Did we catch that? Okay. Uh, yeah. Ezekiel 13 is talking about what the end times are all about, which is a, if you're a prophet, if you're really to, if you're really speaking for God, especially for Israel itself, but even the Gentile church, you can extend that out. If you're claiming to speak for God, you have to stand in the gap, gone up. This is what the, this term comes from gone into the gap to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord, not in a physical battle against some other country or against some attack on your civilization or your church or your belief, but against the battle on the day of the Lord. The purpose of the prophets, the real ones who hear from God, and I'm not saying anybody is claiming that. I'm just saying God knows the difference. The purpose of them in the end times is to build up. Now you can say the wall of the temple, okay, or the actual city of Jerusalem, yeah, okay, but also what does Paul say? The the job of the prophets is to build up the church. What kind of words are we talking to each other? What does what does to build up for the day of the Lord mean? Why would we need to build up for the day of the Lord? Aren't we just saved? Aren't that that's just it, right? Verse six: They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, "Thus says the Lord." That's that's religious speech. That's that's the talk you use if you really do hear from God. But He's saying that's divination. Now you're actually calling on a different God. You're not talking to me. Thus says the Lord, I didn't speak to you. 
but the Lord has not sent them, and yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. Have you not seen a futile vision? Have you not spoken false divination? You say, the Lord says, but I have not said. I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken nonsense, that's the Bible, you have spoken nonsense and envisioned lies. Therefore, I am indeed against you, says the Lord God. And we're going to get maybe into this a little bit more, but this is not trying to be hard to understand. When you say the Lord said, and then you tell something that is a lie, you're a false prophet. God didn't send you. God didn't speak to you. If you said this event will happen and it doesn't, God did not speak to you. I don't care if that's individual to someone else. I don't care if it's to a church. I don't care if it's to a country or about a world event that you supposedly know about. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken nonsense and envisioned lies. You're a liar if you say God said something and it doesn't happen. If you said someone's going to win an election and they don't, you lied. You're a liar. God didn't talk to you. Or any other of various topics. But that one was a big one, wasn't it? My hand. But nonsense. I'm against you, says the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets. Not just, eh, you're a liar. I'm moving on. Let's just ignore all that. He's going to be against those who lie in his name. Against. Against against. He doesn't say those who are against me, I'm against them. He doesn't say those who are pagans, I'm against them. Those who are unrighteous, those who are godless heathens, liberals or something, I'm against them. He says, I'm against you who say you speak for me. You say you know me. You say you're a believer. You say you know the God of Israel. You say you speak prophetically. Now, since you're lying, and since you say I'm actually talking to God and he's talking to me and this is what he says, and those things are lies and don't happen, um, he's against you now. Against. That's different than I'm going to use you again. You just got a little wrong, little mistake. You just messed up there. You're fine. Let's go right back to it. It's not that. And it's not, well, I'm just going to ignore them from now on. Even like in the like Deuteronomy, just when there's a false prophet, just don't worry about anything they say from now on. Just ignore them. It's worse than that. God will actually oppose them. Oppose believers who are speaking for him. He's now against us. And yeah, I want to use words like us. Not them, right? This is the church. Well, this is Israel even, right? It's it's us. Um, my hand will be against the prophets who envision futility and divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Have you heard about uh, lampstands getting cut off in Revelation? Have you heard about the, uh, being blotted out of the book of life? Have you heard about being removed from your office? Should be removed. There should be no record, nor there shall they enter into the land of Israel. Now, if that's physically, of course, that has a very uh, literal un- interpretation. It's not even you don't need interpretation. It just says what it says. You, they shall not be allowed into the land of Israel. They shall not be allowed to enter. They cannot enter. Well, that's fine. Oh, well, what's the big deal? If I'm a Gentile Christian, it doesn't even, who cares? Well, guess what? If it's if it has a spiritual meaning and the Israel that you're reading is about the, um, you know, grafted in commonwealth of Israel that all Gentiles can be, what does it mean now to not be able to enter anymore? Because indeed, because they have seduced my people, saying peace when there is no peace and one builds a wall and they plaster it with untempered mortar. That means it's not going to last. 
it's going to break. And they it's not good enough because it's, it's not true. It's lies. It's not God's word that you're putting in that hole, in that, you know, uh, wall. They seduce my people. When there is no peace, they say peace. Have you heard these? Have you heard a prophet speak nothing but peace and prosperity? And you're going to win this. You're going to have victory that. You're going to have uh, all kinds of riches. You're going to have success. You're going to have wins in your society. You're going to have great um revivals you're going to have uh great revolutions of righteousness in your streets and your nation will belong to god or whatever those are all liars well because the proof is in the pudding number one uh Say to those who plaster with untempered mortar that it will fall. There will be flooding rain, and you, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall tear it down. First of all, that phrase, untempered mortar, you can find that in Zephaniah um, chapter 1, verse 11, for deeper study. And also, of course, we're talking about great hailstones knocking down the walls uh, and destroying everything. You can go later in this same prophet to chapter 38 and 39 on the day of the Lord itself, which is what you're supposed to be uh, putting in the walls to stand up, you know, to endure the day of the Lord. But guess what? There's giant hailstones coming in chapter 38 and 39. Surely when the wall has fallen, it will not be said to you, where is the mortar with which you plastered it? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will cause a stormy wind to break forth in my fury, my wrath, and there shall be a flooding rain in my anger and great hailstones and fury to consume it. That's right, the wrath of God on the day of the Lord. So I will break down the wall that you have plastered with untempered mortar. I, God, will do this. You false prophet, you one that are speaking for me but are not, you're lying, you're prophesying lies, things that never happen, nothing but peace when there is none. I will break your wall down and bring it to the ground so that the foundation will be uncovered it will fall and you shall be consumed in the midst of it then you will know that i am the lord and i will accomplish my wrath on the wall and on those who have plastered it with untempered mortar and i will say to you the wall is no more nor are those who plastered it that is the prophets of israel who prophesy concerning jerusalem and see visions of peace for her when there is no peace i'm going to halt there for a second and maybe revisit the end as we clean up tonight but you know what's going on with international house of prayer yeah with different ministries like this different ones that are even connected to them ones that you maybe know and respect like fai this is why i have been saying for weeks and weeks and even longer if the foundation is corrupt, God is going to expose it and the whole thing has to come down. Now, whether you do it, we do it voluntarily, or maybe the body of Christ tries to get some kind of accountability and does it together before God does it, that's always preferable. Right? I mean, Paul says that about our individual life. You get yourself, uh, work your, out your own salvation with fear and trembling, get yourself right, make sure you do it before the Lord has to do it. same thing same principle he's not playing games the foundations will be uncovered or exposed another translation says it will be exposed that's exactly that is exactly what's happening this very second the foundations of christians uh who's claim to speak for god in prophetic ways are being exposed and I'm not, I'm not, we, you know, our church here, guys, if you've watched us for any amount of time, if you're familiar with what we do, what we think, we do not name and shame. Okay. We do not go around uh, saying this minister or this person or this ministry is, is corrupt or, uh, you know, false teachers or something. We just don't do that. We let the word of God do its job. But these things are major events in the church that's supposed to know better. All right, so let's let's maybe we'll revisit that at the end, uh, where God has one more thing to say.
about the result. We must talk about personal prophecy that is used to manipulate individuals for the purpose of control, for the purpose of authority, establishing authority over someone who has who has been under your authority, for power, for sexual abuse. And again, unfortunately, this is not rare. We've seen it over and over and over and over. I don't care if it's, you think it's just the Catholics? You think it's the, the Southern Baptist Convention? Have you heard about them? Have you heard about I have Kansas City? Have you heard about, this is not going to stop because we have so badly left the Lord on this. And especially, I'm thinking of our, this is our crew, right? Our um, tribe, okay, our side of the church, the evangelical side who believes in, it, we are continuationist, right? We believe that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit have never ceased. We believe that they're happening right now. We've seen it maybe. We've been in the field maybe. We've seen deliverances and healings and the power gifts, right? And all these things. We know the Holy Spirit speaks. Maybe you've had a prophetic incident or encounter in your own life, in your own walk. Maybe the Holy Spirit has spoken to you about things and you've witnessed to others and you've seen amazing prophecies come true. I mean, th that prophetic gift, I mean, you've seen it. It's real. But he will not make you behave yourself. Be holy. Become like him. Be like me submit yourself take up your cross right these are all calls to like every day volunteering it's it, there's no auto there's no autopilot there's no autopilot we have been and will continue to manipulate individuals with personal prophecies for control for authority for power for abuse especially sexual abuse and unfortunately, that's all, almost all men, like men, um, clergy or otherwise, I put here in the note, because that's what we're most thinking of. But it's, again, the Catholic Church, the Baptist, Ravi Zacharias, remember that? Uh, what is this church in California? Bethel? Is that the right one? I hope I'm not sullying someone by accident. But, but like major, major, mega you know, churches with thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who are affected and who look up to them and think they're telling the truth and think they're speaking for God. I, I was born and raised in the Catholic Church. I know how much people respect that. And they think God actually speaks to the through the Catholic Church. They do. That it's unquestionable. Like this is just the way it is. And that goes for all those other guys I just named. But yeah, what do we see? The same darn things happening again and again and again. And how this is a this is a real specific type of thing where yes, Mike Bickle actually used this. We've gone, we've got a lot of revelations now uh, about this man who had extreme favor and popularity, and was a head of a mil multi million dollar organization. Not that he was a multi millionaire, but who knows. Who knows? His family squirreled away something somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but he is not just a bad guy. He's not just a guy who made false prophecies, who were manipulating women on purpose. Not only women, girls, underage girls, pedophile stuff. That might get banned from YouTube. I'm sorry if it does. I mean, might get this video dinged. But that's the kind of like prison stuff we're talking about, evil, satanic stuff. And he used prophecy to do it. He said, "My God told me my wife Diane will die in an earthquake, and therefore you and me are going to get together. He told teenagers this. I mean 13, 14, 15-year-olds this, 17, 18, 19-year-olds when he was double their age. And it never stopped. And he hired people who did the same thing. 
And when it came up, all oh, there's here comes the cover ups because God is not in it. And now I want to do something that's very uncomfortable, extremely uncomfortable, actually. Um, because it's it's wicked, okay? It's wicked, but this is a the prime um, example. <clears throat> Moving my stuff around here of what this is about. Um, IHOP, KC, and Mike Bickle. For this is only an example because it illustrates it so well. Because it illustrates it so well. I want to actually share my screen at this point. And show you, these are the notes. He talks about, and this has gone on for years, okay? Short version of this is the entire ministry called IHOPKC was founded on a false prophecy called the prophetic history where different prophets who were all sexual deviants and, and did this whole personal prophecy for sexual abuse, homosexuality, you know, abusing minors, you on and on. This is the, this is the foundation of the ministry, which is why it all has to come down. God said so. Um, the black horse Zechariah 3 into 4 unto Isaiah 19 and John 17. We've covered this at End Time Church, right? You know this. We've talked about Zechariah. We just went over it a couple months ago in detail, every verse of the book. And we talked about the black for, uh, horse and what that means in Scripture. But this looks very scriptural. Isaiah 19, we've, we've talked about that a lot. In terms of things to come, this is a huge chapter. But look at some of the stuff we're talking about. Zechariah 3 and 4 go together to uh, encourage us to say, let's see what you do, blah, blah, blah. Satan's great weapon is the twofold accusation. Now, here's where he's actually self-fulfilling prophecy. He knows these accusations are going to come against him. So he's trying to prepare his cult, his cult, those who will believe him no matter what, because he's uh, nurtured that, uh, to believe anything that comes against him is a false accusation. And I want to tell you right now, um, if you're ever part of any organization or church that nurtures this, that the leader can't be wrong, and the, the every accusation must be of the devil, even if they're totally legit, get out. Anyway, I don't really want to get into it, but the point is there's a lot of details. He's really smart. Here's all the notes. Here's all the, oh, yeah, filthy garments. That's Zechariah, the, the black horse. Hmm, here, Joshua, your companions, a wondrous sign. We've talked about these things. This is why it's painful. God's glory in the end time church. Look at that. It's right there. The name of our church is right there. Do you understand yet? This is uncomfortable. I've I've had I don't say a close relationship or anything, but I've talked to Mike Bickle. Well, I've exchanged emails. I've had him as part of a conference. I've uh, worked with. Uh, we, there was a big prayer thing last year. Remember for Israel, getting all these intercessors for Israel because of what's going to come upon them. Well, that seemed to kind of be the Lord, didn't it? But yet, look. It's really hard for me to do this. And I don't want you to look at this stuff and think it's it's worth your studying. It's not. Black Horse, September 1984. He's laying this foundation for literally decades about what would happen. Oh, look, Black Horse, December 20, 2010. Go into the E. There's this whole crazy thing that he gets into. But the point is, that wasn't the end of it. Then in October, this past October, right before all this stuff came out, Literally the day, the one week or two weeks before, um, he spoke on it again. And look at the types of things that we're talking about. What scriptures is he is he referencing? 
Let's see here. Satan's most effective end time weapons is accusation revelation 12. Michael, great dragon, accuser of our brethren. John 3 says the saints will overcome Satan's attack of accusation against them. The blood of the lamb and word of their testimony did not their li- love their lives to the death. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't look at this anymore. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yes, we've talked about Revelation 12. He's, for example, this wicked teaching is taking, and if you don't know any better, if you're not on top of it, if you don't know your Bible, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, if you don't actually have direct communion with him and not depending on some smart, charismatic teachers, and I mean that in a lowercase C, right, with the talent and ability of charisma, um, you, you can't know that this is false. You go, oh, yeah, that's what Revelation 12 says. Yeah, it's about accusing the brethren. It must be about false accusations. Bull crap. No, it's not. No, it's not. Revelation 12 is not about false accusations. It's nothing to do about the, the devil coming down, having wrath to accuse the brethren. That's what he's doing before he's cast to the earth. That's what he's doing in heaven today. You don't need a big event for that to happen. That's not a prophecy. You overcome him by not loving your life even to death. I mean, he's going to kill you. That has nothing to do with being accused falsely of something. He's going to kill you because you love Jesus and you want to protect the Jewish people, for example. And you're going to speak out against the false prophet that he props up. That's not the same thing as a false accusation. That's his... um, psychosis coming out in Bible teaching, and and you're just supposed to swallow that. So again, I'm not trying to put this church against that ministry or something like that. I'm just saying this is a perfect example of what the Lord is doing and what the enemies of the Lord, because he says, once you do this, once you start prophesying falsely, once you said God spoke and I didn't, I'm against you now. I'm against you. Don't say, I want to keep the building open to have prayer 24-7. God's against you. God's against anyone who does this. I don't care if you're, what kind of past you have. If you start engaging in this stuff, he's not going to tolerate it. That doesn't mean there's no repentance. Of course, there's always repentance available. But repentance, first things first, is uh, turn from the sin. Repent is to return from the sin. Not return to it like a dog to its vomit, but to completely turn your back on it. Make amends, especially if you've not only hurt people, um, you know, with a spiritually, but actually hurt them, actually abuse them, actually maybe stole their money, which you could make a case. They stole millions of dollars. These guys, um, make amends. That's part of repentance. And the other part is you're done as a minister. You can, you can be restored to the, to a church, to the body of Christ, if you repent and you're sincere and you're wanting to make it right, of course. But you don't get no more ministries. You don't get more millions of dollars coming in. You don't get to say you speak for God. Ever. <clears throat> and I do that now. I have major problems, okay? I have sin to deal with. I have issues. Okay? I can't speak for Pastor Anderson, but I, I've never heard him say he's got it all figured out or he's without sin. Or that he's hunky dory. Um or I'm I'm set to go, right? We're fine. We preach on these things because we know it's a danger. Because we know that God is serious about this, right? So this is an example this black horse prophecy of using Bible prophecy, not just personal prophecy. Like I heard this about you. God said this about my wife dying or God said this about this person or that you're going to have <clears throat> inherit a great blessing and you're going to be a great prophet or apostle, yada, yada. This is actually using the scripture to advance your personal agenda and saying some kind of prophecy in the Bible is all about you. It's not about you. I'm sorry. 
Now you've, it doesn't mean there's not a role for the people to, I mean, fulfill. Okay, we get that. But anyone who thinks it's about them or their anything, we got it backwards. And don't ever use the scripture for your personal ends. Um, so in that case, like I just said, it's very clear. It's it's a known case of manipulation, okay? Like one guy or one church, one ministry is using the Bible to um, intentionally manipulate their followers or manipulate people within their congregations to do something for them or to be a certain way or to keep giving or to, you know, be, be cult members. Um, but I've got to tell you, this in the spirit, this is the facts. Okay. It, that's known manipulation, but the same is true when you're not trying to manipulate in your mind, you don't have any idea that that's not your plan. But when you have a mass deception among Christians, it's the same thing to God. When you speak for God and you make proclamations like be on God's side in this, you must be against this, otherwise you're against God. Your righteousness signaling, I guess, I kind of, did I come up with that? I don't know. But you, you've heard of virtue, virtue sing, signaling? You've heard of that? Okay, virtue signaling means well, you must believe X, Y, and Z to be considered a good person, to have virtue. All right, you see this in politics on the left all the time, right? You You have to, you know, you meet these certain criteria, that means you're virtuous. Even though they have no idea who you are, really, they don't know what's going on. Um, there's no relationship happening. There's, You could be a serial killer, but if you say you have these opinions, you're good. This is the same thing on the Christian side. Righteousness signaling. You have to believe this, that, and the other thing. You have to believe that you have to vote this way. You have to have this opinion. If you don't, what do you mean if you're not supporting Donald Trump? What do you mean if you get the vaccine, you're okay? What if you, what do you mean if you, I mean, it's endless, endless. What do you mean? Uh, I don't know. Just because it's happening in my life right now. Uh, all UFOs are demons. And if you don't believe that, you're deceived. I mean, that's what I've been told. What? God told you that? Is there scripture on that? Right. For example, I mean, like any of this stuff, God told me this, God told me that. God told me uh, this election is going to happen this way and it, and it doesn't. What does that make you? What does that make us? I don't care how many followers you have. I don't care how many uh, dollars you've raised. I don't care what work you do. I don't care if you're in missions. I don't care if you're a uh, teaching, you know, ministry, whatever. I don't care if you've been on stages or if people, everyone knows you. Or if you do this great work for the poor or if you're, you know, help the homeless all day, but you're going to speak for God falsely. If this other side wins this this November, that means we're under God's judgment. But if this side wins, that means God is pleased with us. How stupid are we? How far away from God are we, really? How far away from the, the true Holy Spirit do you have to be to say stupid things like that? I'm sorry, it's not intelligent. It's not spiritual. It's not true. The, the judgment from God will be the same. You're presumptuously speaking for him. We are presumptuously speaking for him. We say God said this when he didn't. There's no, there's no asterisk there. Oh, well, you only have to be talking about, thus saith the Lord uh, in a prophetic way, in a church setting, or in a about a certain subject. Otherwise, it doesn't apply to me. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yes, it does. Yes, it does apply to us. If you said God said this, and he didn't, why would he put up with that? We we love the fact that you know God. Oh, I, I, all men are uh, all men are equally sinners in the in the sight of God. All men have fallen short of the glory of God, and we have to repent. Yeah. Well, there's the other side of that coin too. 
which is that if it applies to the super rich, super popular TV, uh, you know, preacher that you don't like, or the church that you don't like, or the denomination you don't like, or the political party you don't like, if it if it um, applies to them, it applies to us too. It applies to you because he is not a. It does not have favorites. He's not a respecter of persons. And the reason why I feel it's important to do this now, because it's already February 12th, and this thing, this problem, this issue, um, this presumptuousness, this speaking for God, this if you don't do this or that, we're going to be on God, you know, this is not over, and it's going to get worse. Whether it's uh, in churches, in ministries, in in politics, in, in every realm. I'm sorry, I'm not going to speak peace when there is no peace. I'm not going to tell you it's going to get better when it's not. My pastor Randy, you're right, is pretty fond of saying it. Who says it's going to get better? It's going to get worse before it gets better. That's not that's not doom saying. That's not that's not gloom and doom. That's not fire and brimstone. That's called God's word. It doesn't mean your life can't be right with God. It doesn't mean you can't have the peace and the love and the joy and the and all the things that come with holy living. But that's not the world situation, and that's not even any particular country's situation or any neighborhoods, right? It's not going to get better. This year will be a very, very challenging year for the church, for the church who really cares about God's true proclamations and true prophecies and true speaking. It will be a very hard year. I wish I wish I didn't have to say that, but it's true. Now here's the the real kicker of it. Is this intentional? Is, are these false prophets, these teachings about black horses, even though that's scripture, but yet we have a think about it this way. It's like the rapture. Right? We see Revelation 12, Isaiah 19, uh scriptures about preparing the way for the Lord. That's what we didn't get to in the in the Mike Bickle junk is uh, his ministry is basically built on that, preparing the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord by all this, you know, his theology. But all those things generally are right. I mean, you want to study the black horse that's coming and it's Zechariah and Revelation, it's in there. Isaiah 19, the highway that's coming. Yeah, well, absolutely we want to study that in the, the right order of events and, and what's going to happen with Egypt and Israel and Revelation 12 and the, the dragon and the how all that happens and the and the child and who is that and, and the three and a half years of readying before the tribulation starts and then the second three and a half years. Yeah, this is very, very important. It's It's critical. Preparing the way for the Lord. Yes. I mean, this is all right. But guess what? Now all the average person, the average even Christian now is going to see is, oh, yeah, that that crazy Kansas City church talked about this black horse and preparing the way of the Lord and the, and the, the Satan, you know, coming to falsely accuse me of sexual crimes. That's all they're going to remember, just like the rapture business. All the, the average person who is menial, you know, kind of moderately, kind of sort of Christian or is on the periphery or is in the culture, all they hear are failed rapture dates over and over and over and over again. All they hear is failed rapture. Dates. Oh, how'd that work out for you? How'd that work out? Where's the Lord? Where's Jesus? Why do you think the, the, the scripture is in there about them mocking? But oh, where's the promise of his coming? When's it going to be? Because ding dongs in the church kept saying it was going to happen and they had dates. And this is the rapture. This is the rapture. This is the rapture. This is the rapture. Now, all the only thing people know about the coming of the Lord and gathering of the saints, gathering of the church together to him, which is Bible and is true, all they know about it is now, ah, it's going to happen any day, and we're going to all disappear from our clothes, and planes are going to crash, and it's going to be any minute, just like all these guys on YouTube and TikTok say. Well, obviously, it's not true because it never happens. So they're going to throw all these things away too because our witness is garbage. And again, our witness, our witness, us, this is us. It's in our camp. This is our problem. Doesn't mean every single one of us has participated in this. God, I hope not. 
I know not, not everyone, but yeah, it's us. It's the body. We're doing this to ourselves and we're, we're besmirching the name of Jesus. Why doesn't no one, you know, why is it so hard to get through to folks? Cause they see crap like this. Even if they get into, it, even if they go to Kansas city and they live in there and they go to prayer rooms and they go to services and they go to online churches and they get, and they go to YouTube and try to find whatever the, the truth about this or that. So they saw an ad on the Super Bowl and now they're interested in Jesus. And then they see this. What if it's intentional? And my first thought when I typed this was the enemy. Oh, the enemy is obviously getting false teachings on all this stuff to to harm the church, to get you know the message confused and and all that. But then I'm like, wait a second. Ezekiel just said God's going to do this. And we've got one more place, which is in the Amos as well. But let's, or first of all, what does Amos say? And then I'm going to go end it with what Ezekiel says at the end of 13. What does Amos say? Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. Who is someone who's seeking the word of the Lord? Is it a non-believer? Is it a pagan? Is it a Buddhist? Is it a Muslim? Nope. The ones who are seeking the word of the Lord are people who are following God. And some translations even put this, not just the the word of the Lord, but revelation. Where is the revelation of God? Where is his speech? Where is he speaking? But they shall not find it. Who's going to do that? Who could do that? Who could possibly frustrate the the search um, for God? And his word, isn't, doesn't he want that? Isn't that what the gospel is all about? But God himself will intervene at the time of the end and say, no. I'm not talking to you. I'm not revealing myself to you. You've, you've spoken in my name and you lied. And you led people away from me. I'm not going to talk to you again. And in fact, I'm against you. God, God is doing this. It's not the enemy. Maybe God is using the enemy to do it, maybe. But God is interested in making sure that we don't find it. In that day, the fair virgins and strong young men, that means these are the best of the best, the fair virgins and the strong young men, this is the the cream of the crop, they will faint from thirst, because it's not for water, but for finding the word of the Lord. They're going to faint. They're going to fail. They're going to fall. Those who swear by the sin of Samaria. Who, what, is it, what is that? Or some is Ashima is actually a goddess of Samaria. What's that? What's Samaria? Isn't that Israel? It is. It's northern Israel. Who say your God lives, O Dan. Dan was an idolater. Idolatry is the sin. Another God speaking for God when it's not him is an idol. You're serving someone else. You're speaking for someone else. It's not speaking for him. Therefore, I'm not going to give you my word anymore because you said you're speaking for me. And you lied. And as the way of Bersheba lives, they shall fall. Bersheba is in the south, right? of Israel, just putting the geographic lock and key in this. Yes, it's about Israel, but guess what? They will faint. And as the way of Bersheba lives, if they say they're going to, we're going to live because of this false way, they shall fall and never rise again. Now in Daniel chapter 12, we see a promise of those who will rise and those who, like verse 12 just said, they will run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord. Well, Daniel 12, 4 says, yeah, many will run 
to and fro. Knowledge will increase. Knowledge of the Lord, maybe, will increase, but only among those who are wise, only among those who God can trust, who haven't spoken for him, who haven't used manipulating prophecy for their own ends, whether they know it or not, speaking falsely in his name, promising things that aren't true, said peace when there is no peace, prosperity uh, speaking for their own ends, um, relationships, you name it. All of that, God is going to tear it all down, and he's not going to speak anymore to them, to us who do that. That's Amos, and let's finish Ezekiel. Uh, Verse 20, therefore, says the Lord God, behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls there like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go, the souls you hunt like birds. Who are the ones who are trying to hunt the souls that God made? His, uh, His fellow, his fellow believers, but they're not speaking for him. This is the result. Souls pay the price. I will tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall no longer be as prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Because with the lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad. Think about, guys, hear this clear. Hear this now. Hear it clearly. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad whom I have not made sad. And you have strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life. Therefore, you shall no longer envision futility or practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. That is the word of Jehovah God. <clears throat> Amen. Okie dokie. Whew. Um, let's see what you guys are saying, because you're saying a lot. All right, praise the Lord. Um, it's a terrible thing to speak for the Lord when he has not spoken. Yes. False prophecy sullies the name of God. He won't put up with it. That's correct. Um, oh, this is talking about the IHOP situation. It's yeah, it's really bad. It's even worse than most people know. Lord of mercy, Mokul says, yeah, in, in Latin, carry Eliasin, right? Uh, so twisted about IHOP and Mike Pickle. I hope it, he shuts IHOP down for good and their assets are sold off. I agree with you. I'm sorry, I, I agree. That, that ticks people off somewhere, but I don't care. Uh, we believers need to mature and know the word of God in order to fight against this. Yes, we do. And we can't depend. I mean, I'm happy to provide the, you know, what I can as a, as a teacher, because that's, again, that's a gift God gave me, but that's not going to save you. My teaching is not going to save anything. You can't get your Bible from me only, for example, or for any other teacher. You've got to study yourself. You've got to give God your time. Doesn't mean you're going to be comfortable and know everything off the bat and you're good to go. No, I mean, he sends teachers for reasons, but you can't depend on anyone. Um, More of the IHOP stuff. Yeah. Uh, Satan doesn't flat out lie. He manipulates existing truths. Well, he certainly has done that. Right? That's the testimony of the Bible. Um, he's the father of lies, right? But then every time he speaks, it seems like he's telling at least a half a truth. Yep. Very serious, very dangerous, flat out antichrist, not just difference of hermeneutics. Yeah, we're talking about using scripture to um, manipulate. Uh, 
Um, else use we see in a glass dimly to excuse error. You're talking, and again, I wish we, I know it's they, I'm not saying bond servant does this, but we should really get to use to we, we are doing this, um, to see our error. Yeah. It basically is an excuse to say, oh, well, I, we see through a glass darkly or dimly. Yeah. That therefore my false prophecy is fine. No, it's not fine. That's not what Paul means. And you're not allowed to do that. God does not allow you to speak in his name and get things wrong. He just doesn't. Uh, there's T-Rex. False prophecy makes Christianity look as bogus as a psychic hotline to the lost. That's right. Very much so. I mean, it very much seems like the same thing, especially when you're talking about Holy Spirit, you know, prophecy stuff. It's To them, it is like the psychic hotline. Oh, okay, i got to call God directly and get the answer, and he's going to tell me my future. And uh, wait a minute. This is all bogus. It's all made up. It's used for manipulation and, and sex and money. Yeah, I've seen this before. Why would they even bother with a God like that? Or Christians like that. They would. It's a joke. Remnant says it isn't. By the way, thanks for commenting on the X platform here. I love that uh, people are watching here and it's, it's apparently reaching people. Praise God. Um, it is intentional. This is necessary. A conscription of conscience to draw us into the wilderness. That sounds like my friend, Nick Franks that uh, phraseology. Um, he, God may very well be doing exactly that. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, a little, a little lot to unpack perhaps. Um, but it's just what's, ha- it's a, that's a right now, you want a right now word, you want a right now Word from God, that's it. That's what's happening right now. Um, hi, George. George Jason. I, I'm guessing George, your first name. Hey, thanks for checking in on um, YouTube. Uh, Revelation 12, 7 tells what Satan is doing worldwide. Well, <clears throat> I have, by the way, just not to, as a commercial, but I did. Oh, shoot. My wife's reading my book actually right now. I can't show it on the screen. Uh, it's called Flee to the Mountains. Um, I wrote a whole section in that book back in 2019 about Revelation 12 because it's so important that we get it right. And Revelation 12, 7 da, 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 says, right. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought with his angels, but they did not prevail. Um, Satan is doing oh 17 I'm sorry not 7 do you? and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have testimony of Jesus Christ Um, well he's not that has not happened George I'm here to tell you the war in heaven hasn't happened yet and that's a big deal and it's not a personal thing with accusation the revelation um, 7 through the end is future in fact more than that and that's why i wrote it in fleet to the mountains um verse six to the end actually that's where the the first three and a half years of the final seven are told so that's all future six seven eight all the way to the end of revelation 12 is future now yes of course satan desires to control everything and deceive that's what he does but this that particular scripture is not for now it's, you ain't seen nothing yet. Scary thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Yeah, somebody famous said that. The preacher, right? Uh, indeed, it's absolutely terrifying. The hands of Yahweh prophesying falsely in his name. I, th- I wish we would have that. I don't think that fear of the Lord, that, that fear of the Lord in that is just gone. It's gone. It's nowhere. Right? That's the that's what's happening right this second. That fear of the Lord on that topic especially, or I'm sure a lot of others too, but with that prophesying falsely, there that fear is gone. We just don't care. Because we don't feel the judgment of God, I guess. We don't think it's it doesn't happen immediately, or we don't feel it, or we don't appreciate it, or we don't 
know how seriously God takes it. I don't know. But we just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. We just don't care. We don't have any fear of God about that. We think, like you said, oh, glass darkly, whatever. We just think if we hear a voice or if we have some kind of spiritual experience, it must be God. I'm here to tell you, no. Okay? Not necessarily. Let's put it that way. Not necessarily. This is why we need discernment of spirits. Oy. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Right. That's the words of our Lord Jesus precisely. And um, this is the state that we're going to find ourselves in. That what? Uh, that for Christians will be former Christians. That they're going to turn away and they're going to turn on those who are actually serious about keeping the name of Jesus uh, clean. But that's the, uh, that's the atmosphere. That's the conditions. That's the, the um, climate for the end time false prophet situation. Right. Everyone's hating each other. Ex Christians everywhere. Um, Cold hearts, supposed Christians cursing up a storm on live TV, saying to kill each other and let Russia invade other people, and that's fine. You, ne- I mean, I'm, I'm just picking on one thing that popped into my mind, but like, it happens every day now. This is a bad situation, guys. Um, right, where were God's people first led when thirsting for righteousness to the bitter world waters? Uh, that's yeah, you're going old old school there. Um to the wilderness. Miraba, right? Um yeah, bitter. Hebrews. Thank you. I knew someone would get that hang, angry God quote. That's Jonathan Edwards. There you go. And he was uh obviously he's revered now, but I don't think his life wasn't very easy, was it? No fear of God. Fear of God is no fear of God is okay. No fear of God is narcissistic self idolization. I guess that's a good way to put it. That's the time of proving our faith to be genuine. Where we'll stand with man or with God. Yeah, I mean that's true, guys. I'm kind of like sounds kind of silly, right? Don't don't listen to me. Don't stand with me. Don't listen to my teachings. What's this guy trying to do here? Uh, I'm trying to equip you. And myself. Um, Parable of sheep and the goats. Goes to all the Christian stuff, but are cast out. The Lord doesn't know them. That's correct. I wish more people would get that part. The goats are not unbelievers. Goats are not unbelievers. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Thank you all. So very much. Um, I so appreciate your hanging out tonight and studying with us um, together as a family for taking communion together. If you did that, or at least being here for that, for praying together, uh, for worshiping together in song, um, for sharing this video, for telling someone about what we do here um, because it's going to be needed, right? Whether it's um, just because people are, sick and tired and are leaving their, you know, they have unchurched or they don't know what to do or they don't know where to turn, or maybe they just can't find a good Bible fellowship in their, in their town or in their location or country. Maybe they're persecuted for their faith. That's what end time church exists for also Um, to go underground and to still meet together. That's what the app is for. You know, I'm not, it's not perfect and it's not the only solution or the only tool, but, it's it's a tool so please get it and use it and um just continue to seek the lord yourself get in the word of god every single day do a plan on the bible app if you have to whatever's easier for you just open the book ask for the holy spirit to teach you and um assuming you're 
born again, then that's what we need to do every day. And um, for those of you who I communicate with outside uh, this forum, uh, you're a great blessing to me and my family. I thank you for that. And um, God's word is the only word that we need to uh, to know. It's going to become very real, very alive, with power, with meaning, with bitterness, lamentation, mourning, and woe, and glory, and light, and thunder, and on and on and on. Okay, thanks for being with me, guys. This is the End Time Church. Um, well, thank you as well, my sister. Uh, these are the end times. We are the church. If this has been a blessing to you, if you think we are of God, we are totally dependent on ourselves. Okay, I give to End Time Church whatever I can every month. I ask you to do the same, especially if you're a member. And there is membership, slash membership. Check it out. You get the full revelation okay you get everything there's nothing secret everything is out there in the open uh, who we are what we do what we believe where the money goes you name it expectations of you know you as a member or us as as shepherds all that stuff is out there so please give it a look give it a share get the app use it a lot of people have the app but just don't use it i don't get it well they use it for a day and and then don't anymore i, I don't know whatever i can only lead you to the uh, to the resource, right? All right. Love you very much. Thank you. You all stay courageous. You all are better talented in most things than me. Believe that. Believe that. Um, so we are, we'll see you, uh, Lord willing, probably Friday, probably Friday, Wednesday. I'm going to have to take uh, the day so there won't be a prayer time. Um, but that's all right. So plan is Friday, but Lord willing, when he sees fit to it, then we will get together again. Love you very much. Till next time. For everyone here at End Time Church, this is Pastor Manti, please stay with Jesus. Jesus be glorified in your church. May we never speak presumptuously for you. May we know the fear of the Lord in all these things. Thank you for being you. Thank you for loving us first. Amen.